I thought I'd share with you a couple of other things that are now considered problems that were formerly mysteries. And I'm going to illustrate them with a couple of YouTube videos. So um, I'm going to try and edit them into this. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I wanted to show um, how infant cognition used to be just a complete mystery to us. And then now today we recognize that it's measurable with clever, creative designs. So right now you're seeing a six-month-old baby participating in our numerical change detection task. And in this task, the baby is looking at two different streams of dots. One stream is always showing a constant number of dots, so it's always showing 10 dots. And then the other stream is alternating between 10 and 20 dots. And so the idea is that if the baby picks up that this one stream is changing in number, then he'll spend more time looking at that stream because it's changing more and is more interesting. So babies that show a strong preference for that stream we think have a strong number sense. So if you're ready, I'm just going to close the curtain and dim the lights and we can get started. Perfect. So when the baby goes into the room, they sit in a high chair and then the parent sits next to the um, baby at all times. So then during the study, we ask that the parent um, not interact with the child and then the study takes about four minutes, so it's pretty quick. So we had the same babies come back in three years later when they were three and a half. Babies that looked more at the numerically changing stream had higher math scores in preschool. So an exciting possibility that stems from this work is looking if um, we can actually train this approximate number sense and have young children and preschool children perform games that help them manipulate approximate quantities to see if that could lead to improvements in their math achievement. And then the other video I'm going to show you is, um, sorry, I don't want that to start. Um, the other video I, I want to show you is one on bird cognition. And bird cognition is just sort of a stand-in for our understanding of animal cognition that's been really blossoming in the last 20 years. Um, because researchers have gotten really smart at figuring out how to test what a bird knows, what a dog knows, what a horse knows. Um, they're really figuring out um, what's going on inside the heads of infants and what's going on inside of animals thanks to more clever designs that are making these questions into problems rather than mysteries. In an Essex garden, Anthony Bloom demonstrates what seems to be astonishing cleverness with a fiendishly complex test for his three ravens. They belong to a group of birds called corvids, which comparatively have the largest brains of any birds. In one of Aesop's fables, a thirsty crow drops stones into a pitcher to raise the water level high enough for it to drink. Antony's water-filled test is very similar, except it involves a float containing the bird's favourite food, mint steak. But to get at this reward, the ravens will have to drop these stones into the left-hand tube. Every stone they drop will raise the food a little higher, and what's more, the stones are hidden around the garden. They're going to need six in total. The ravens show great frustration in not being able to get at the food, which they can clearly see through the perspex. But they're using this frustration to push themselves onto the next stage. Before long, the ravens are searching the garden for the stones, dropping them in one by one. Nope, still can't reach it. One stone is definitely not enough. It's going to take a bit more effort than that. It looks like they're acting cooperatively, but in fact, each one is acting independently, eager to get the food reward for itself. It's almost a race between them to see who can finish the test first. Just one more and they've got it. And just to prove that there's no camera trickery involved, here's the whole thing again in a single shot. 
Given their large brains, we would expect ravens to be intelligent, but Anthony has trained them to do all this. Whether, given time, they would have worked it out for themselves, who knows? So I'm going to go ahead and try and um, interleave those videos in, and we'll see how I do. 